In this schematic of polymers, this is A, which indicates an individual monomer, and B, which is the most common of the plastics we'll talk about, are the monomer bonded over and over and over again. So these black lines connect connecting these, this is a chemical reaction to bond individual monomers. And C shows this is the most common of the plastics in your everyday lives is uh, plastic number one. This is called polyethylene terephthalate, and it is two different monomers, but still bonded over and over, not 7,000 different monomers, but maybe 7,000 of these two bonded in series the most common plastics that we have in our everyday lives are this variety, which is B, which is the same monomer bonded over and over and over again. And we'll start with polyethylene. So polyethylene has two main forms and they're both, it's important to note, the same exact monomer, which is the same, basically just carbon and hydrogen atoms. So this is an example of a polyethylene bottle that is pretty durable and yet kind of flexible. And this is the same type of plastic, poly polyethylene, that's this flexible kind of uh, wrap, okay? So also flexible like this, even more flexible though, but not necessarily as durable. They both have properties that are desirable, which is why they're both so common. The formation of a polymer starts with the monomer, and the reason we have variation of different plastics is because the monomers are different. So for polyethylene, the monomer is ethylene. So you might recognize eth as the prefix that represents two carbons. So that's mother eats peanut butter. E for ethylene is two carbons. So in this monomer, there are these two carbons, and there's a double bond between those two carbons, and then there's also four hydrogens. So this is each carbon has four bonds coming out of it, this carbon on the left, four bonds, and this carbon on the right, four bonds. And that's the maximum number of bonds to have the octet rule fulfilled for the carbons and also the duet rule for those hydrogens. So this is the monomer, and this N represents how many monomers will go into the addition polymerization reaction. So N is a whole number value that's going to be called a coefficient. R represents a catalyst, and a catalyst is something that speeds up a chemical reaction but is not consumed in the reaction or is regenerated by the reaction. R has to be shown over the arrow or as a reactant and also a product and then can be canceled out because this is a substance that is not part of the atoms or either of the substances that are in the reactants or the products. So it is here shown as a dot, which is called a free radical. We've seen a free radical before that was in the ozone decomposition reactions, that that was the free radical chlorine. What this free radical does in the addition polymerization reaction is it attaches to one side of the monomer and it causes this double bond to break. It initiates the double bond to break and then basically forms two sticky sides. So this one sticky side, this this catalyst is attached to, leaving this one sticky side here that is not sticky, but it's actually where you can form a bond to a new monomer. And so one side will always have an open bond formation to a new monomer that is joining this reaction. And so it depends on what the reaction is, which, which polymer that's being formed, and under what conditions. So this is a reactive catalyst, can be some type of compound that initiates this reaction and speeds it up. This, once the double bond breaks, it allows for bonding of a monomer on either side. Since there's only other monomers present in the reaction, the monomer can, a new monomer can bond, let's say on this side, and now you'd have a polymer of two. So this continues on in a chain reaction, building the chain one monomer at a time. This is called addition polymerization because it is simply adding monomers one by one to a polymer chain, and the only reactants are those monomers, and the only product is just 
the, the addition of all of those monomers. There are no other atoms added in there. Uh, there was that reactive catalyst, but the reactive catalyst, which initiates the reaction and is initially bonded to a monomer, then pops off at the end and can be regenerated or reused. So this is showing two ethylene monomers, and you can see in the polymer, the reason why this is shown in brackets is that this is a continuing reaction, can bond on either side, but there are two carbons and four hydrogens in this first monomer. So this would be the first monomer, and the second monomer added has two carbons and four hydrogens. What's different though is that these are all now single bonds between the carbons. And if you throw in a third monomer, so here's a third monomer right here, what'll happen is that this double bond will break, this third monomer will add on to one side of the growing polymer chain, and now you'll have uh, three monomers, or this represents six carbons for those three monomers. So there should be no other products, there should be no additional atoms or no atoms eliminated, and this obeys the law of conservation of mass like standard chemical reactions.